Hello my friends of the internet, my DIY friends. Hey, Jeff here again. Today we have a really great video for you again. So we're gonna show you how to put in these bifold closet doors. So here's a new closet door we bought. And I know it's gotta be one of the most pain in the neck projects for you to do around your house because everybody has problems with their bifold doors. They stick, they don't go right, they scrape. It seems like the door frame, the opening's not right. Well, today we're going to show you how to overcome all of that. And this is a new one that we're going to install. So let's get right to it. So here's the new door we're putting in and let me show you what I like so much about this door and why it's so much better than the regular doors you have. Most of us have those these bifold doors that are similar to this but they get these tiny little one inch slats that go across here because the builders give you the cheapest, nastiest wooden louvered doors and when you have like 50 of these slats coming down man those things collect a boatload of dirt. They're impossible to get in there and get all of them, and especially behind them, particularly if you have one of these doors in front of your air conditioner. That's brutal. They just collect up so much dirt, and if you don't, if you're not in there vacuuming the back of those on a regular basis, your air conditioning filter is clogging up much quicker than it should be. But anyway, what I like about these here, first of all, these are made out of PVC. Now on the video, what you're looking at now, you might think, wow, those are white wood. They're not, these are white, plastic PVC, which is better than, than wood. They're, first of all, they're lighter, and then uh, you never have to worry about painting them because this is the color they are. And what I like about these is these giant uh, three inch slats here. These might even be two and a half, uh, but they're much bigger than the slats you get on your normal bifold door. So these are much better. And then as you pan down here and look at the bottom here, and I like this, this makes it look a little classier too. We have a solid raised panel bottom. So it, it makes it uh, look kind of nice. It kind of breaks up the monotony of just having a bunch of slats running all down. Now, forget about using the knobs that these guys supply you with. I usually go to, you know, wherever and buy much fancier knobs. I mean, just on your closet doors, for three or four dollars, you can get a really nice, fancy, you know, metal looking knob or whatever your heart desires. But you can make it look real, real classy. Why have a closet door with that same old boring wooden knob that everybody gives you. Uh, that's just a, a joke when for a couple of bucks you could make it look like a million bucks. Okay, so let's get started on the install. I wanna make sure we see all of them. Okay, so it is chalkboard Sunday, folks. So I wanted to just show you briefly how these bifold doors really work and why these mechanisms act the way they do here and how it is that we always get it so wrong. So here's your opening for your your bifold doors here. There's a track at the bottom on the floor, so here's the floor, and then here's the top of the opening, right up here. And there's usually a bracket on the floor that's tightened down by a bolt that can go left or right, and that bracket has this little hole in there to hold the peg from the door. There's another one on the top. There's another movable bracket here. So your, your goal then is when you put these doors in, is to find the setting that works with these brackets. How far from the wall should it be? Because when you close the door, you might find that the edge of the door is too close to the wall here and it'll just scrape into the wall and it won't work. So that's a common problem that a lot of people have. So if you're wondering, why is the top part of my door fine but the bottom part is off? Well, that is because, my friends, either the wall is crooked or your bracket is not set right according to the way the wall is. Okay, and another, and here's another problem too. If you come in and you put texturing on your walls, you spray texturing on your walls, you just lost an eighth of an inch of your opening right there on the left side and another eighth of an inch on the other side. So now you just lost a quarter of an inch. And I've seen doorways where a quarter of an inch was very, very critical in having the proper spacing for the door. So you got to keep that in mind too. Before you texture, if you don't have enough spacing to spare, don't let them texture the inside part of that, that frame for your um, bifold door there. All right, so here's what happens. If we look right down here, this is what your bifold doors look like. They usually have a peg on the top and a peg on the bottom. 
and they usually have another one over here too. Uh, some might give you something else down on the lower end here to keep it balanced in the track. But what typically happens is if these two are in place up here, so the, door, the whole door like this is supposed to mount inside this, this opening here and inside this opening here. So this whole door goes boom like that. And if he's perfectly balanced, theoretically, you shouldn't need any other pins down here below. And, but you'd still need this one to guide it. And, and also, if you, let's say your door comes like this with these three pegs right here, these three. And that's for the left side, but if you need it for the right side, what you're supposed to do is pop them out and flip them over where there's holes on the bottom of the door. And it's kind of like uh, changing your refrigerator door. You just move everything to the other side. Okay, so here's what happens when you're done. You're, let's take a look up top here. When you're done here, you're, you're putting your door in. See, So the peg goes in that hole up there. And then one of them is spring-loaded, usually the top one. I like to put it on the floor first, and then push down on the top one, swivel the door into place, and then let the top one spring up into that opening up there. Okay. All right, so this is, this is very important That's to remember. It's, it's easier to just put it put that pin down there on the floor and then let this one spring into place up top. It works a lot better really when you have two people. It, it's just so much easier because one person can be inside the closet on their knees pushing this one down and then making sure it gets in. It, it's pretty hard because the second you put a door there it gets so dark that you can't see where the opening is or even if you're in the, you know, the right spot or anything. So your door is going to look like this right? and then the other hinged part of it is going to be like this. And he will be like that. And he too has a spring-loaded pin there that his, his, his duty is to just get inside the track and maintain a, a, a guiding inside the track there. So that's really all you got to do. So the, the key concepts here are loosening the two screws here for these guys here. Set the door in there. Make sure the door is fine and everything. And once you're happy with that, then you come back and you tighten both of these two brackets down. All right, let's do that. All right, so here's here's the, the issue what we have now. So what we have here is a track now, right? We just showed you that track earlier. But all the modern day bifold closet doors come with just these brackets now. They don't use the tracks on the bottom anymore. Because, um, you know, like we were saying, the, the idea is that if these two are completely, you know, vertical and, you know, nice and level plumb, all that stuff, then this door should be able to just stay perfectly straight. It doesn't need anything on this end. So that's why they only give you just this here. I don't think these are as good as the old style uh, pivot holes like we showed you earlier. Because here's what they give you now. They give you this bolt, all right? And this bolt goes under the bottom of the door. It would go like right here, see? And that is supposed to now rest on this bottom bracket once you put the door in place, see? So that's your position there. What I don't like about these is people are rough on their bifold doors. So they they slam them shut and they, they fly them open, you know, they're, they're just really rough on the doors. And when that happens, and your door's supposed to be sitting right in here in this position, what happens sometimes it jumps like that, or a little bit like that. Next thing you know, now your door's out of alignment. So now you force it a little more and it causes it to jump even more. Now it, the thing just even stops working. Sometimes they jump right out of this if the conditions are right. If, you know, so. But that's what we have and that's what we're going to set these up with. However, though, I am going to try to see if I can get this to work on that old hole there that's already there on the floor. We're going to see if we can use that current bracket that's already down there on the track. This would be a perfect time if you haven't already to hit that subscribe button down below. And once you hit that subscribe button, you'll see that little gray bell. Click on that and that will alert you to every time we put in a new video so that you'll never miss a video. And also if you like our video here, you can click on the thumbs up button down below. That lets us know that you like us. And any questions you have, please enter them in the comments down below too. Okay, so since we're using these in the kitchen, I thought it would be a good idea to carry them over to the closet bifold door. So we'll go ahead and use these. OK, 
Okay, so these come with a new track too for the upper, so we're going to remove this old upper track and replace it with this one. You can see they look pretty similar. Okay, so you set your door up with your pins close to where the connector is. So see, that's where it's going to plug in right there. And you can see they use the thinner metal type. See how it's springy right there? And that peg, that springing peg right there, is going to go into this hole. But he'll go in second. We're going to put the one down on the bottom of the door in first on the floor. So let's do that now. Okay, so you see that hole right there? And then you want the peg to come right down in. So now we're in on the floor side, okay? That's how you know you're in. You'll feel it snap in place. Okay. We are up at the top now. And you see how we got, again, the springy peg? And you let that just snap it right in there up in the top. See that? That's all there is to it. Okay, so we have an engineering problem here, folks. And we run into this all the time. We're used to it. So these, this door is about 78 and a half inches tall. So even though when you buy these closet doors, these bifold doors, they will say on the box that it's, for example, this one is 30 by 80. Well, it doesn't mean that's how big the door is. That they, they're referring to the rough end opening that they're expecting to see. So with this one here, but the problem is, is when you look down and measure from the floor up to the top here, the top of the track, the builder only left us 79 inches. Okay, and so that's a problem, and I hate it when they make these tiny little soffits like this, you know. They had just given us maybe one more inch, we would have been fine. So the problem is, is you can't have a 79 inch tall opening with a door that's like 89 and three quarters is probably what this is ending up being. And then with those little knobs, it, it's, it's adding more space. So. We really need to cut about an inch off the bottom of these doors. Okay, so even though these are plastic doors, the manufacturer allows us to cut off up to an inch off the bottom. And anytime you can avoid having to cut off the bottom, you know, that, that's fine too, but we're stuck. We have to cut it in order to make it fit. We see this happen a lot. This happens quite a bit. And so we just have to be ready for that. So we draw a score line across there. And then we will cut this on the table saw. And when we look here on the specs here, you can see here that, like for example, all these doors that are supposed to be 80 inches tall, it says right here they're 78 and 3 quarter inches tall. See? And so they're expecting you to have a finished door opening of 80 and 5 eighths. And, and we're at we're at uh, 79 inches and maybe maybe 79 and a quarter. So we're pretty much almost an inch and a half too low with the height of our opening. So cutting, uh, cutting off the uh, bottom of the door there an inch, it may or may not even help at all, but that's all we can do. So we'll have to work with that. Okay, so here we are, we're doing a nighttime cut. Now you can see I've set the fence here so that it'll give us a 7 8 inch cut because the kerf of the blade is an eighth of an inch so it'll give us a total of one inch okay so that's what you want to be careful of when you're doing things like this if it's that critical so we're just going to lay the door panels down and go right across the blade and there's our 7 8 inch cut right there with the eighth inch from the blade so by the time it's done we'll have a one inch slice off of the bottom of these doors Okay, so here's the setup. We're just going to run it right across the blade. You got to keep it nice and parallel. Keep it up against the fence. And it's best to do it with two people. And we have it on this green underlayment here to protect the door from getting scraped on the table. Here's our pieces cut off, and there you go. Now we can put the caps back on the bottom because we had to remove them before we made the cut. Okay, so we've got the caps back on and I've put the bottom pivot bolt back in there as well. 
and this particular bifold door is done. Now we can get the other two done. Here's the second cut. I'm going to remove the silver track now. Ones over here. Okay, so there's the first part of the upper track in. Now we'll do the second part. I usually like to put a cloth down here on the floor to protect the wood floor because when you're installing these doors, you don't want the bottom of the door to start scratching up your nice brand new wood floor here. So now we're ready to install the door. Okay, so what we're going to do now is now that we've cut the door, this is going to go up in here. So that peg is going to go up into that hole right there in that pivot point. And then we come back down to the bottom of the door and we just simply lower the screw in the bottom of the door to support it in place. Okay, so here's the knob, the same one that we used in the kitchen. So we're just going to put it here. Okay. All right, so that's what it looks like there, nice and perfect. That looks way better than that cheap little white wooden knob that the manufacturer provided, huh? Okay, so we have both the doors are in, and here's something you might see every once in a while too, is you know you can see that the doors are off by a half inch from each other. So the one on the left is up too high. So we have to lower it. And so the way to lower your doors, if you remember we were looking down at this bottom pivot here, that pivot bolt. All you got to do is screw that inward, upward, inside the door further, and that will cause the door to lower as you screw that bolt in. So we'll go ahead and do that. But otherwise, you can see that uh, we were able to use that track that was already there. We didn't have to uh, screw on our own bracket onto the wall there. So that's good that we were able to still use that. And then as we come up the wall, you can see we got a pretty good, uh, reasonably straight opening all the way up there and there we are up at the top now as you can see here we have a very classy looking hallway here now in our guest bedroom here so this is the guest bedroom closet here and that's a linen closet for that little bathroom that's right there that's the guest bathroom so this looks very nice and you can see why we choose this I like this pattern where you have what they call louvers over panel so that's the, the panel section is the lower section. So really the only louvers you'll ever have to clean are just these few here up at the upper side. And these are three inch louvers. So very easy to get in there and clean them up. And as long as you maintain them, um, vacuum them every once in a while with a brush attachment, you should be fine. And remember this is PVC plastic. So they're nice and white. We didn't even have to paint them at all. No priming, no painting, no fuss. Just pull them out of the box and install them on the wall. Okay, as you can see here, we've rounded out the beautiful look of this place here. We've got the bifold doors are in and complete, and they open it, they close very smoothly. Everything looks very nice here. So thanks for sticking around here to the end, and if you found this video useful, hey, we'd appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up down below, and uh, you can click on the subscribe button down there too while you're at it, and that way you can come back and binge watch numerous other videos that we make every week for you. And when you're clicking on that subscribe button, make sure you click the gray bell icon next to it. That will alert you every time we upload a video. And don't forget to share this with your friends on Facebook and Twitter that you know might be doing projects like this. So that's it for this week. And folks, thank you. We will see you next week. Have a great week.